Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. Welcome to Broadway.com's Live at 5. It is, as I said, Friday. It it's sure October is. 11th. Yes. I'm Beth Stevens. I'm Andy Lefkowitz. And we are here in the studio with an all-new Caitlin. Caitlin Gallup is here. A new, a new Caitlin, but an old Caitlin. A favorite Caitlin is here. And we have a very special guest yes, today. Guys, we have Tony winner Michael McGraw here from Tootsie. From Tootsie. Woo! Yay! Woo! And we will get to Mr. McGraw, but first, our top five. All right, this Broadway alum has joined the ever-growing cast of The Prom Movie Musical. Yes, yeah, so we've been super excited about this Netflix screen adaptation of the Tony-nominated musical The Prom, and we found out today that Kerry Washington has joined the cast. I did not see that coming. Yeah, right? Yeah, kind of a surprise. So uh, we don't know exactly what role she's going to be playing, but I'm thinking she's going to take on the role of Mrs. Green, uh, Alyssa's mom, uh, the girlfriend of Emma. So uh, I we'll guess see. we'll see. Yeah, I guess we'll see. But as we know, the cast will also include Meryl Streep, uh, James Corden, Nicole Kidman, Andrew Rannells, Aquafina. So star. Why not, right? Um, and uh, Keegan Michael Key. So uh, I guess we'll see who else is going to be in and it. And the prom guys are writing it. Yes, they sure They're are. They're very involved, so that's exciting. Totally. So let's see what else happens. All right. Um, I feel like he's beloved. He's treasured. He's a national treasure. Um, but Billy Porter is taking on this iconic fairy tale role. <sighs> I'm so excited. I'm, I got a little beclempt. <laughs> Billy Porter is in talks, let's just say he's doing it, but he's in talks officially to play the fairy godmother in the upcoming Cinderella movie musical. What? Right. That's all I'm saying about that. Yeah, he's going to be great. He will join, if he joins, but he's joining, uh, with two-time Grammy nominee Camilla Cabello, who will be making her film acting debut in the title role. I can't imagine anyone better than Billy Porter bringing some magic Yes. Of course, he just won an Emmy for playing Pray Tell on Pose, and he's a Tony winner for Kinky Boots, and he has a lot of Broadway credits, and we love him so much, and he's a fashion icon. So, there you go. There you go. And speaking of modern-day Cinderella's, there's a new musical, stage musical adaptation in the works from Andrew Lloyd Webber, uh, kind of a modern twist on Cinderella, so keep your eyes but peeled for that. But this is not that. This Don't is not that. Don't get confused. There are a yes. lot of different properties with that title. There are lots of title. Cinderella titles, yeah. And I'm sure more to come. <laughs> um, if you like... Best-selling novels, Tigers and Puppets. You're in luck. Yeah, so this wow. is pretty cool. <laughs> we found out like today that the stage adaptation of Life of Pi is going to move to the West End in the spring. Um, so this is based on the acclaimed novel, which was turned into a hit film. Uh, what's kind of cool about it for stage fans is that it features puppet design by, uh, you know, uh, What's the gentleman's name? Um, is he on here? Yeah. Uh, who did the puppet design for the uh, for War Horse, which won oh. a bucket load of Tonys uh, several years ago? So uh, super excited about that. Uh, keep your eyes peeled. It's going to arrive uh, in the West End in June 2020 at Wyndham's Theater, and uh, hopefully to Broadway at some point. I hope so. Um, and not surprising news, but we're so glad that it was officially announced. Um, the Broadway League has announced that it will dim the lights in honor and in memory of um, Diane Carroll. So legend and groundbreaking actress Diane Carroll passed away on October 4th, and she won a Tony Award in 1962 for No Strings. And she was the first uh, black actress to do that in the Best Leading Actress category. Some Broadway theaters are dimming their lights. I don't know how they make these decisions, but let me just tell you which ones and when. It will be the American Airlines Theater, the Broadhurst, the Helen Hayes, the Hudson, the Marquee, where Tootsie is playing, uh, the New Amsterdam, Vivian Beaumont, Samuel J. Friedman Theater, and St. James Theaters for one minute on October 16th at 7.45 p.m. A great honor for a great actress. All right, in other somewhat prom-related news, um, <laughs> we had this interesting story come in from New Jersey. Yeah, so we found out today that Justice Silo Smith, who's a student at Liberty Middle School in New Jersey, was called out uh, by the school with a dress code violation for wearing a pair, a piece of merch from the prom. 
hit Broadway. Tell musical. us more, Andy. Yeah, so she was wearing a T-shirt, which you've probably seen around this office if you've been here, uh, that says, we're all lesbians. And um, they wear that in the show, right? Yeah, they wear it in the show. Um, and Cillo Smith, who identifies as a lesbian, uh, she received two dress code violations, one of which was for articles of clothing that contain references to illegal substances, sexual innuendos, inappropriate language, and pictures, sayings, or symbols that show affiliation to hate groups, gangs, or demeaning messages directed toward any individual individual group or association. Doesn't Do we sound need like to send Dee Dee Allen to New Jersey? Right? Seriously. Seriously. And she was also called out for wearing an accessory that can be dangerous and or disruptive to the learning environment. I don't know, guys. We get a lot more done around here when we wear prom merchandise. <laughs> so I'm a little concerned about merch, this. Yeah. <laughs> so um, as of right now, she has still had uh, has those violations, but there's a board of ed meeting on October 28th when it's going to be debated. So and there might be a musical field. number that we yeah, never know. Yeah, seriously, that's crazy. Crazy. Well, we have some other things on the site. We have a new show, People, with Alan Menken, talking about Little Shop of Horrors, which is now off Broadway at the West Side Theater, as well as the upcoming Little Mermaid um, movies and. Hercules and what's going to happen with that. And we have our first vlog with the Mean Girls Tour with Mariah Rose Faith. So fun. It's good. Get She's in Losers. Vlogger. It's called Get in Losers. Wow. It's from the movie. Don't get upset. Um, we also have The Lightning Thief had a meet and greet at the Empire State Building. And there's a reason for that if you see the show or read the books. We also have opening night of Tracy Letts' Linda Vista, which opened last night. So happy opening to that show. We have some photos from that and some... Uh, oh, a first look at David Byrne's American Utopia. It's Ooh. very stylish. Very stylish. Yeah. Um, and happy first preview to Tina, which starts tomorrow. Nice. Exciting. So excited. So thank you, Andy. Happy you weekend it. to happy you. Weekend. Happy long weekend. Yes. Because we have a holiday on Monday. And Caitlin, will you tell us about our guest, please? I would love nothing more. My Michael McGraw is currently starring in Tootsie, which marks his 14th Broadway production. Whoa. He won a Tony Award for Nice Work If You Can Get It and was also nominated for Spam a Lot. His other Broadway credits include She Loves Me, Front Page, Memphis, and more. You can follow him on social media at McGraw B Way and leave all of your questions and, co and comments below. Please welcome Michael and Beth. Thanks, Caitlin. Hi, Michael. Hi, Beth. I'm so happy oh, to that talk was to nice. You. Yeah, you got to hear all, yeah, all of those. It kind of things. fascinates me yeah. that I'm still alive. <laughs> It is fascinating. <laughs> we'll get into that. We'll get into that. How's it going over there at Tootsie? It's going great at Tootsie. It's going great. You know, Big when, laughs when every night. It's a very funny show, as you know, mm. and uh, with a Tony-winning funny book by Robert Horn. Uh, when Caitlin was saying that, that you won, of course, your Tony Award for Nice Work, if you can get it, I was thinking, your job in Tootsie is nice work if you can get it. <laughs> yes, it because is. you like come out, yes, you get is. amazing zingers, and then you, you just go back to Tootsie again. I go back, and I play uh, gin for an hour and a half. Is that what you're doing? Yeah, I play with uh, Sarah and, and Andy. Um, <laughs> we play gin. Sarah Siles and Andy <laughs> yeah. Grotolution. Did yeah. I say it correctly? Yeah, Grotolution, yeah. You learn yeah. these things as you yeah. work here. He, uh, we, we play gin for about... I don't know, 20 minutes. I thought they were dancing, and that's what I learned from no, the backstage no, no, vlog, no, no, that no, they no. do dance routines. They, no? Sometimes, but most of the time, we were up in my dressing room um, playing gin. Playing gin. Yeah. And fighting with each other. Oh. It's just It's a very brutal game that we play. Oh. Ooh, sounds really... <laughs> do you bet? No, there are no the bets. They're just, just insults everywhere. So you play Stanfield, mm -hmm. the agent. Right. I was looking up some of the ways that this agent has been described in the press, and they call him no-nonsense... Exasperated. Mm. Um, exasperated. Is a, that's <laughs> there are like a lot of adjectives for how to describe. That one's so tell used me about a lot. this character. Um, well, Stan is uh, you know he's he's Michael Dorsey's agent and long uh, suffering. Long, long suffering is good, uh, and uh, you know I guess he's tried his best to get Michael work, but Michael keeps um, losing jobs, he's keeps getting fired. Person. He's very difficult, um, temperamental. Mm -hmm. um, which is how I describe him in the in the show, and I I, well, I always like to think that they at least have some sort of working relationship. Mm -hmm. You know that that Stan knows that Michael is talented, um, otherwise he wouldn't be his client. Yet he's a pain in the ass, yeah. so he, he deals with him um, until he fires him. You get to say some zingers. Do you have favorite? lots of zingers? There are a lot of zingers in the show. There are a lot of great one-liners. Do you mm -hmm. have a favorite that's yours or someone else's? 
Uh, oh, there are some great ones. I like Andy's line. Uh, I don't. I don't have relationships. I just uh, avoid people who have seen me naked while trying to find new people to see me naked. I mean, <laughs> it's a great line. I mean, who doesn't relate? <laughs> I mean, you know, who doesn't? Yeah, you know, <laughs> who hasn't been there? <laughs> um, now, did, yeah. did you base this character on any agents that you may or may not know or have represented you? I've only had one agent since I came to the... Are you serious? I've, I've had the same agent You're for over 30 guy. years. Yeah, crazy. Um, crazy. Francis Del Duca at the uh, now defunct... Well, it's not defunct, but um, it was the Fifi Off Oscar agency oh, yes, way back when. Mm -hmm. It was the, the Gage agency and Fifi. They were together for a time, and then um, they split up in Fifi. And when I came to New York in uh, 88... Um, my wife and I came here we, to do the off-Broadway production of Forbidden Broadway, mm -hmm. and uh, and they they just uh, and now they're just opening and now they're again. Coming yeah, up again. Yeah, it's great. Um, yeah, and so we came to do that, and it was such a big hit that everybody was throwing agents and managers were just throwing their cards at everybody, you know, in that show. So it wasn't difficult for me to get an agent, um, but I liked that guy, and we we've been together since. But this is like. This is like a hard bitten, hard boiled New yeah, York agent. That yeah, I mean, you know, if you watch the film and you, it's uh, it's Sidney Pollock in the right. film, um, you sort of get the idea of. I, mean, I, I think in the film, Sidney's a little more high powered than he's than, lunching at the Russian tea room than so. Stan Fields. Yeah, he's a little <laughs> more high powered. Um, <laughs> um, but he, he's a he's an agent who's on the phone all the time and. Uh, I mean, he shows up at Michael's apartment in the yeah, second act. Yeah, I was act. surprised by that. Yeah, he shows up at Michael's apartment to tell him that he got a, a big play. Um, uh, so, uh, I don't think I don't think Stan is a bad guy. I think he's a nice guy. I'm gonna say something controversial. Yep. Why can't you have a song? Can you have a song? <laughs> Can we put one in? Um, well, I guess there was a song at one time. There was a, a rap between Michael what? Dorsey and Stan Fields. I'm glad I asked. Yeah, there was a rap. Because uh, I, when we were in Chicago, I had questioned them as to why Stan didn't have a song, since I my background is in musical theater. Of course. Um, and then uh, David Yazbek told me that there was a rap at one time, and then um, David Chase, who was the arranger, um, was able to pull it up on his computer and showed it to Neil, and and <laughs> I was like, you know what? First of all, me doing a rap with anyone, uh, that that would that would not be good. That would not be good. You'll never see me in Hamilton. <laughs> no, no. But maybe Spamilton, because you were in Spam a lot. Oh yeah, it could be. You yes. were the Patsy. Could be. Patsy. I was the Patsy. I mean, what? How heavy was that pack that you wore? Well, it was. 26 pounds. Oh, that's specific. Yeah, it was 26 pounds. Um, a little lighter than a full military <laughs> pack. Uh, as, I don't know if you recall, but at one point, the cow comes over the castle and crushes Patsy. You know, Patsy. <laughs> Spoiler. Well, 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 how could a, a cow do? And it crushes him. So th th there was all this, like, dense foam and everything else in the pack, and it made it really heavy so that I could absorb the blow when the cow crushed me, <laughs> which was always a funny... Which was always funny if I would hurt myself and I would have to put in a, um, a, a an accident report to an insurance company somewhere <laughs> in Albany. You know, they, they, you know, they had no idea what show business was, and you had to write down what happened. What happened, and I would say uh, I was crushed by the cow as directed. <laughs> it's a work hazard. Yeah, <laughs> and then you know, some guy up in Albany. This guy was crushed, crushed by, by a, a cow, cow. again. Um, <laughs> yeah, once again, yeah, he was once crushed again. By um, so it was that. So it was heavy for that reason, um, and uh, it was it was a lot. But after my first year, uh, a friend of mine came to the show, and I was like showing her the the pack backstage, and she was like, "Why is it so heavy?" And I told her, and she said, "Well, why can't you have a light one and a oh?" So in my next negotiation, they made me a one that weighed about eight pounds. <laughs> this is the kind of stuff that your agent was doing for you in your contract. If I, had, Stan if I had Stan it. Fields, I... <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to ask you a question that probably everyone asks you about Spam a lot. Did you keep the coconuts? Um, I actually signed so many away. Oh, really? And I broke a lot during the, during the run. So they had a lot of them. Um, 
But I used to, we, uh, so many for Broadway Cares and stuff like that, I used mm. to sign the coconuts mm -hmm. and give them out. Um, I don't think I have a pair of coconuts at home. Mm. Forget it. This interview's <laughs> over. I'm done. I'm done. So tell me more about the Tootsie fans. Who are the people who come to the stage door and what do they want to know? And do they recognize Santino Fontana? Um, yeah. I mean, I, I, it's a mixed bag, I have to say. Um, you know, we have a lot of uh, people who were, were big fans of the movie. You know, who are actually some mm -hmm. sometimes I find they're a little reluctant to come to see the show because they're such big fans of the movie. And they're very different. Yeah. But when they do, they are always at the stage. You're always saying, I'm so glad I came. Mm -hmm. And because I, I, I almost didn't because it's my favorite film. And um, so I hear that a lot um, that uh, sometimes I hear that it's even funnier than the movie. Um which I have to say, and it was a, it's a favorite movie of mine. Um, I think it really is kind of funny, though. As know. a forbidden... <laughs> it's know. funny, people, it's funny. As a forbidden Broadway alum, mm -hmm. do you know how they're going to send up Tootsie? Because I'm sure they will. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't spoken to any of those folk. Um, Fred Barton is doing the musical direction, and I should, I should ask him because he's... You could get some intel. Yeah, but. yeah. <laughs> what did I don't you know. do when you were in Forbidden Broadway? What were your What was your? Track? Oh my God! I did a thousand things. I did, um, I did the uh, the M Butterfly number, which was the the you know I'm a butterfly. I'm a Chinese guy dressed in a dress. Um, I did the uh, the Mandy Patinkin um, somewhere somewhat overindulgent, <laughs> which was always a big favorite. Um, what else did I did? Cameron McIntosh pitching selling sweatshirts and t-shirts and blankets and mittens. Um, <laughs> Uh, so many, so many. That sounds like fun. Oh, it was a blast. Uh, was Were that, did you ever have like irate Broadway performers coming after you? No. I mean, there wasn't that much social uh, media back uh, then. No, you know, no. And it, I recall a lot of times um, casts, like almost full casts would come, like eight, nine people they would from get the every cast. Joke. Yes, and they would come, and you know, we, you know, if you were we were sending up, you know, when we did the Le, the Les Mis number, which was famous in those days of us t going around. Uh, sidestepping as if we were on a turntable. Uh, I mean, it was the first turntable that was, I think, yeah. the Les yeah. Mis turntable was the first thing. So us making fun of that. You know, Randy Graffel and the band. Da -da 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 -da. Um, uh, they loved it. They loved it. Um, we had, Carol Channing used to come all the time to see her number. She was a Forbidden Broadway aficionado? She used to come a lot, yeah. Wow. She, uh, uh, yeah, Boston and New York. Um uh, Patty Lapone, lots of them. All, yeah. the, all the greats. Yeah. All right, before I let you all ask Michael questions, I have another question. Mm -hmm. I watched your Tony acceptance speech. Oh. I like to do that when someone comes in. And you were so chill. I don't know how you felt inside, <laughs> but you know. seemed very relaxed. <laughs> I, Walk me through that Tony experience. Well, you know what? I won the drama desk the week before. I think it was the week before. Mm -hmm. uh, and I got up, and I was, as you said, I was verklempt. Yeah. I had kind of lost it at the drama desks. Um, I started to mention my family, and I got all choked up, and I, I was like, I wanted to run off the stage. So I think that sort of got it out of my system before the Tonys. Um, and I, to be honest, um, you know, winning it was is fabulous. It's great, but just being invited to the party and being there. Is, is part of the, you know, the experience and mm -hmm. what's really fun about it. Um, going to the luncheons and seeing all the people. And uh, so it's sort of calming in a way that you're just finally, you're just finally sitting there. Um, I mean, they call your name and it is a little burst of what room am I in? Who am I? What am <laughs> I doing? Um, but yeah, it was a little weird that I was kind of that calm. But I did forget to mention my daughter um, in my speech. So uh, I know she's watching now, so... Katie Claire McGraw, thank you for everything. <laughs> a little late, but <laughs> no. always welcome, always welcome. <laughs> All right, Caitlin, what questions do our readers and viewers have? All right, we've got some good ones. Alex wants, Alec wants to know, how do you keep from breaking performing with the hilarious Santino Fontana? Yes. Well, Alec, um, uh, to be perfectly honest, we haven't kept from breaking. We've actually <laughs> broken a couple of times. Um... Uh, there was one specific one not too long ago where 
Uh, uh, Santino's eyes dance all over the place when you're when you're acting with him. I mean, you can see that he's his mind is is going. Um, so sometimes that in itself is a little uh, a, a little uh, hilarious, I guess. It you off yeah, a it kind of throws you off. Um, and we did break once, really, really big. So it, it's hard not to break with him. So you sort of have to just like barrel through. I guess that's the answer. I love that. Um, if you could, I, I said earlier you are in your 14th Broadway musical, which is wild. Um, <laughs> if you could go back and perform one of those shows again for one night only, which one would it be? Oh, yeah. Oh, and so man. many comedies for you. Oh, man. Um, that's it's hard a hard to choose one. among your that's children. That's a hard so. one. It's, uh, I, I would love to go back and do... Um, uh, well, my fr my fr first one, Swinging on a Star. Um, I would love to do that again. I'd love to do Patsy again, um, just for the just for the hell of it. Speaking of that, Simon Russell Beale was one of my kings, mm -hmm. and he was just knighted. It's now Sir Simon Russell Beale. Oh. Wow. Really cool. Yeah, I, I was I did it with four four people: uh, Simon, Tim Curry, of course, right. my favorite, um, Jonathan Hadari, and um, and Harry Groner. So now you're going to have to call him Sir Simon. Sir Simon Russell Beale. There you go. <laughs> um, Katie, you might know her, asks, um, Dad, can I borrow the car tonight? <laughs> uh, Katie, you always borrow the car at night. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course you can. You know where the keys are. All right. Good question. Good question. Good question. Really <laughs> unusual question. <laughs> um, this one's really good from Lindsay. She asks, what's the best advice that you've ever received? Uh, best advice I ever received, I guess, would be to tell the truth. Uh, just tell the truth, uh, especially in comedy. How many of your shows, your Broadway shows, are comedies? I feel like it's almost all of them. They all are, yeah. yeah. I don't think I've ever done a, I, I would, I would kill to do a, a serious play, um, uh, well, we can always put it out there. Yeah, Which just one throwing it out do? there. I don't know. Uh, I'll let anyone pick, but I would like to do any any sort of serious play. Um, but yeah, they've all been mu musical, musical comedies, or like Izzy Dead was a comedy, mm -hmm. which was a lot of fun. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, thank you for joining us, Michael. Thank you. Come see Tootsie. Come see Tootsie. He'll be upstairs playing gin when he's not yelling <laughs> at Santino Fontana on stage. <laughs> thank you so much, thank Caitlin. You. Will you take us on out? I would love to. You all can listen to this interview as well as so many amazing other ones by searching anywhere you get your podcast, hashtag live at five. Um, tune in next week as we are joined by some of our favorite people like Daphne Rubin Vega and Raul Esparza um, and so many more. See you and have a great weekend.